Level zero? Right now, somewhere in the universe, a star is dying. Not exploding, not screaming into the void, just fading away. Like a candle running out of wax, it's simply running out of fuel, and what happens next is so gentle that you'd miss it if you blinked. This is how 95% of all stars will die, including our sun. For billions of years, stars like our sun burn hydrogen in their cores through nuclear fusion, creating helium and releasing energy. It's a delicate balance between gravity trying to crush the star inward and fusion pressure pushing outward, but nothing lasts forever. Eventually, the hydrogen runs out, and when it does, the star enters its final act. Our sun will swell into a red giant in about 5 billion years, expanding so large it'll swallow Mercury, Venus, and possibly Earth. The outer layers will cool and glow red, while the core contracts and heats up, desperately trying to fuse helium into carbon and oxygen. For a few hundred million years, the star gets a second wind, burning brighter than it ever has before. But then the helium runs out too. And for a star like the sun, that's it. Game over. The core doesn't have enough mass to ignite carbon fusion. The outer layers gently puff away into space, creating a beautiful planetary nebula. Those stunning cosmic shells you've seen in space photos. The core that's left behind is a white dwarf, about the size of Earth, but containing half the sun's mass. A single teaspoon would weigh 15 tons. This white dwarf will sit there for trillions of years, slowly cooling, fading from white to yellow to red, to eventually a cold, dark cinder called a black dwarf. Though the universe isn't old enough yet for any black dwarfs to actually exist, it's peaceful, almost boring. The star goes gentle into that good night. But what if the star has more mass? What if gravity refuses to let it die so quietly? Level 1. Now we're talking about stars between 8 and 20 times the mass of our sun. These stars don't fade peacefully. They die in a matter of seconds, and what happens is one of the most violent events in the universe. These massive stars burn through fuel at breakneck pace. They fuse hydrogen into helium, helium into carbon, carbon into neon, neon into oxygen, oxygen into silicon, and finally silicon into iron. Each stage happens faster than the last. The star burns hydrogen for millions of years but silicon for just a few days, and then it hits iron. Iron is the end of the line. Fusing iron doesn't release energy, it absorbs energy. The moment iron accumulates in the core, the star is doomed. The core collapses, not over millions of years, but in about one second. One moment the core is the size of Earth, the next it's compressed to the size of a city, maybe just 20 kilometers across. The temperature spikes to 100 billion degrees. Protons and electrons are smashed together so violently, they merge into neutrons. The outer layers, suddenly unsupported, fall inward at 70,000 kilometers per second about a quarter the speed of light. When this infalling matter hits the newly formed neutron core, it rebounds. The bounce sends a shockwave screaming outward, and within hours it blasts the star's outer layers into space in a Type II supernova. The explosion releases more energy in seconds than our sun will produce in its entire lifetime. For a few weeks, a single dying star can outshine an entire galaxy. What's left behind is a neutron star. But what happens to a star when even a supernova isn't the end? When its core survives the explosion, and becomes something far stranger. Level 2. Imagine taking the mass of our sun and compressing it into a sphere the size of Manhattan. That's a neutron star. The density is so extreme that a sugar cube-sized chunk would weigh about 500 million tons. Neutron stars are made almost entirely of neutrons packed so tightly, they're essentially one giant atomic nucleus. The surface gravity is 200 billion times stronger than Earth's. If you stood on a neutron star, you'd instantly be flattened into a layer of atoms less than a millimeter thick. The surface is a crystalline crust of iron nuclei, but deeper down, the material gets weirder. Neutrons drip out of nuclei, forming a neutron fluid. Go even deeper and you hit the neutron superfluid, where neutrons flow without friction. And at the very core? We don't know. It might be a quark matter. Many neutron stars spin incredibly fast. When the star's core collapses, it conserves angular momentum, like an ice skater pulling in their arms. Some neutron stars rotate hundreds of times per second. The fastest known pulsar, PSR J, 1748, 2446 aid, spins at 716 times per second. The surface is moving at about 24% the speed of light. These spinning neutron stars are called pulsars, and they beam radiation from their magnetic poles like cosmic lighthouses. When those beams sweep across Earth, we detect regular pulses so precisely they rival atomic clocks. But neutron stars can do something even more spectacular. When two neutron stars orbit each other, they slowly spiral inward, losing energy to gravitational waves. 
Eventually, they collide in a Kila Nova, an explosion that creates heavy elements like gold and platinum. Most of the gold on Earth came from neutron star collisions billions of years ago. But what happens when a collapsing star is so massive that even a neutron star can't survive, and gravity finally crosses a point of no return? Level 3. When a star more than 20 times the mass of our sun reaches the end of its life, the core collapse doesn't stop at a neutron star. The infalling matter is so massive that even neutron degeneracy pressure isn't enough. The core keeps collapsing, past any known state of matter. It collapses into a singularity, a point of infinite density where the laws of physics stop working. A black hole is born. But here's what people get wrong. Black holes are not cosmic vacuum cleaners. If you replace the sun with a black hole of the same mass, Earth would keep orbiting exactly as it does now. Black holes only trap things that cross the event horizon, the point where escape velocity exceeds the speed of light. For a stellar mass black hole with 10 times the sun's mass, the event horizon is only about 30 kilometers across, smaller than most cities, yet it contains more mass than 10 suns. What happens at the event horizon defies intuition. From your perspective falling in, nothing special occurs as you cross it. But to someone watching from outside, they'd never see you cross. Time dilation would slow your image, making you appear to freeze at the horizon, gradually fading from view. Once across, all roads lead to the singularity. You can't escape. Trying to avoid the singularity would be like trying to avoid next Tuesday. It's not a place. It's your future. Before you get there, tidal forces would stretch you apart. At the event horizon of a stellar mass black hole, the difference in gravitational pull between your head and feet would be millions of times Earth's gravity you'd be stretched into a strand of atoms, a process physicists call spaghettification. The supernova that creates a stellar mass black hole is called a hypernova. These explosions can produce gamma-ray bursts, the most luminous events in the universe. A gamma-ray burst releases more energy in seconds than the sun will produce in its entire lifetime. Focused into jets traveling at 99.995% the speed of light, if one went off within a few thousand light years and pointed our way, it could strip away our ozone layer and trigger a mass extinction. And if black holes can form from dying stars, what creates the monsters lurking at the centers of entire galaxies? Level 4. At the center of nearly every large galaxy, including our Milky Way, lurks a supermassive black hole. These monsters contain millions to billions of times the sun's mass, Sagittarius A. The black hole at our galaxy's center weighs about 4 million solar masses and has an event horizon 12 million kilometers across. Here's the mystery. We don't know how supermassive black holes form. Stellar collapse can't explain them. Even if you collapsed the most massive stars and fed them continuously, you couldn't grow a supermassive black hole fast enough to explain the ones we see in the early universe. We've found supermassive black holes in galaxies that formed less than a billion years after the Big Bang. Several theories exist. Maybe they form from the direct collapse of massive gas clouds in the early universe. Maybe they're the result of runaway collisions in dense star clusters. Maybe they formed from primordial black holes created in the Big Bang itself. Whatever their origin, supermassive black holes are the most powerful engines in the universe. When matter falls toward them, it forms an accretion disk, spiraling inward and heating to millions of degrees. The disk glows brilliantly, creating what we call a quasar. The brightest quasars outshine their entire host galaxy. Some supermassive black holes launch relativistic jets, twin beams of plasma shot out at nearly the speed of light. These jets can extend for millions of light years, and, and here's something wild. Tidal forces near supermassive black holes are weaker than near stellar mass ones. Because the event horizon is so much larger, the tidal gradient is more gradual. You could theoretically fall through the event horizon of Sagittarius A and survive for minutes before tidal forces become significant. But what happens when galaxies collide and their central black holes are forced into a slow, inevitable death spiral toward each other? Level 5. When two galaxies collide, their supermassive black holes eventually spiral toward each other, shedding energy through gravitational waves. This dance can take billions of years, but the end result is inevitable. They merge. In 2015, LIGO detected gravitational waves for the first time, produced by the merger of two stellar mass black holes 1.3 billion light years away. The collision released more energy in a fraction of a second than all the stars in the observable universe combined. When supermassive black holes merge, the gravitational wave signal would be like space-time itself, ringing like a bell. The Milky Way is on a collision course with Andromeda. In about 4.5 billion years, our galaxies will collide, 
and their central black holes will eventually merge. The resulting black hole will have a mass of around 150 million suns. But what if black holes keep merging? Over trillions of years as galaxy clusters collide, we might end up with ultra-massive black holes containing hundreds of billions of solar masses. Some theorists calculate that the largest black holes possible could reach masses of around 50 billion solar masses. A few candidates already exist, like TUN-618, estimated at around 66 billion solar masses. These objects would have event horizons larger than our entire solar system. But what if black holes themselves aren't eternal, and even the darkest objects in the universe are slowly dying? Level 6. In 1974, Stephen Hawking discovered something remarkable. Black holes aren't entirely black. Quantum effects near the event horizon cause black holes to emit radiation, now called Hawking radiation, and this radiation slowly drains the black hole's mass. Here's how it works. Quantum mechanics allows particle-antiparticle pairs to spontaneously pop into existence everywhere. Near a black hole's event horizon, one particle might fall in while its partner escapes. To conserve energy, the black hole must lose mass. For stellar mass and supermassive black holes, Hawking radiation is absurdly weak. A solar mass black hole has a temperature of about 60 nanokelvins, colder than the cosmic microwave background. It actually gains mass by absorbing more radiation than it emits. But as a black hole evaporates and gets smaller, it gets hotter. The rate of evaporation accelerates. A stellar mass black hole would take about 10 circumflex 67 years to evaporate. That's far longer than the current age of the universe. But wait long enough and every black hole will evaporate. In the final moments, the black hole would be tiny, incredibly hot, and then it would vanish in a burst of radiation. What's left? Nothing. No singularity, no event horizon. Just photons scattered across space. The collapsed star, the consumed matter, all converted back into energy. This is the ultimate fate of every collapsed star. A violent quantum suicide exploding back into existence after spending eternity as a hole in space-time. But if black holes truly evaporate, what happens to everything that ever fell inside them? Level 7. When a star collapses into a black hole, what happens to the information about the matter that fell in? Information in physics means anything that distinguishes one state from another. According to quantum mechanics, information can never be destroyed. Yet when matter falls into a black hole and the black hole eventually evaporates, where does the information go? Hawking radiation is supposed to be completely random, containing no information about what fell in. This is the black hole information paradox. Several solutions exist. The information is destroyed. Quantum mechanics is wrong near black holes. Most physicists hate this option. The information is encoded in Hawking radiation. Maybe it contains subtle correlations that encode the information, but in such a scrambled way that you'd need all the radiation to decode it. The information escapes through a remnant. Maybe black holes leave behind tiny Planck mass remnants that store information. The firewall hypothesis. Perhaps the event horizon is a wall of high-energy particles that destroys anything trying to cross. In 2020, Stephen Hawking's final paper proposed that information might be stored in soft hair, zero-energy photons on the event horizon. The truth is, we don't know. Solving this will require a complete theory of quantum gravity. We don't have that theory yet. And what if the singularity itself never forms? What if quantum physics stops collapse at the very last possible moment? Level 8. When you compress matter to extreme densities inside a black hole, quantum mechanics should matter. General relativity predicts a singularity, but it doesn't account for quantum effects. One idea proposed by physicist Carlo Rovelli in Loop Quantum Gravity is that matter doesn't collapse to infinite density. Instead, it collapses to the Planck density, about 10 circumflex 96 kilograms per cubic meter. When matter reaches Planck density, quantum pressure halts the collapse and initiates a quantum bounce. The singularity never forms. Instead, you get a Planck star held up by quantum effects. From the outside, it still looks like a black hole. But inside, time is so dilated that the formation and re-expansion might all happen in a fraction of a second internally, even though trillions of years pass outside. Here's the wild part. Some versions suggest that black holes could eventually explode as white holes, the time-reversed version of a black hole spewing out all the matter they consumed. White holes are mathematically allowed but have never been observed. They're regions where nothing can enter but everything can leave. But what if a collapsing star doesn't just die? What if it gives birth to an entirely new universe? Level 9. Here's a mind-bending possibility. Maybe the universe we observe is already inside a black hole. Some theories suggest that the Big Bang itself could be the formation of a black hole from an outside perspective. Like, we'd never know. 
We'd be living inside the ultimate collapsed star, unable to see outside the event horizon. Every star that collapses into a black hole might create a new universe inside, a new Big Bang occurring beyond the event horizon. The singularity might not be an end, but a transition point into a new space-time with different physical laws. If true, our universe could be one of countless universes nested inside black holes. Every black hole in our universe could contain entire universes, a fractal cosmology of collapsed stars giving birth to infinite realities. It's speculation, but it's grounded in the mathematics of general relativity. Black holes might not be endings, but beginnings. And if stars can collapse into black holes and black holes can create universes, what happens when the entire universe itself reaches the end? Level 10. Imagine watching the universe until the very end. Not just billions of years, but good years. 10 circumflex, 100 years into the future. By this point, the last stars have died. The universe is dark and cold, filled with black holes, dead planets, and scattered particles. The black holes slowly evaporate through Hawking radiation. Wait even longer, and the last black holes evaporate. Now the universe contains only photons and particles, all spread so thin, they almost never interact. This is the heat death of the universe. Some cosmologists speculate about Poincaré recurrence. Given infinite time, quantum fluctuations could spontaneously create organized structures purely by chance. Or maybe the universe experiences a big rip, where dark energy tears space-time apart, ripping galaxies, solar systems, planets, atoms, and finally even black holes apart. Perhaps our universe is already inside a black hole. We'd never know. Every star that collapses might create a new universe inside. The singularity might be a transition point into a new space-time. Our universe could be one of countless universes nested inside black holes. A fractal cosmology of collapsed stars giving birth to infinite realities. From the gentle fate of a white dwarf to the quantum mysteries of Planck stars, from neutron star collisions to the possibility we're living inside a black hole, stellar collapse takes us through the most extreme physics imaginable. We've observed thousands of neutron stars, hundreds of stellar mass black holes, and dozens of supermassive black holes. We've detected gravitational waves from merging black holes. We've photographed the event horizon of M87's black hole, but we still don't know what happens inside. We don't know if information survives. We don't know if the universe itself is inside a black hole. Every answer we find opens a dozen new questions. Somewhere out there right now, a massive star is running out of fuel. Its core is collapsing. In seconds, it will become a neutron star or a black hole, warping space-time, creating gravitational waves, maybe seeding a new universe. And we'll be watching, building better telescopes, better detectors, better theories, trying to understand what happens when gravity wins, when matter can't resist anymore, when everything collapses and the universe reveals its deepest secrets. The story of stellar collapse isn't finished. It's just beginning.